This episode of Heartstopper takes us to Paris, giving us not only stunning views, but also plenty of couples drama. It's great to see our characters out of school and in full vacation mode. So let's dive into where each couple is at, the challenges they're facing, and some of the unexpected people they turn to for advice. Mr. Ajay and Mr. Farouk. Their main challenge? Connecting with each other. Mr. Nathan Ajay and Mr. Yusuf Farouk are paired together on the school trip and sparks are starting to fly. From the start, Nathan shows his interest in Yusuf, always watching for his reaction to anything he does. But it's not one-sided. There's an awkward scene where they're trying to move around each other in their room, and you can see Yusuf is just as affected as Nathan. These two are a slow burn, and I love it. Tara and Darcy. Their challenge is a lack of real communication. Tara is still worried about Darcy not saying I love you back, and Darcy is avoiding the issue every time it comes up. Tara doesn't make much headway in this episode, but she has a nice conversation with Charlie, where they both admire aspects of each other's relationship. Tara envies the open, honest communication Nick and Charlie seem to have, though ironically, they are hiding a few things from each other at the moment. Darcy also doesn't make much progress and keeps deflecting and joking instead of dealing with anything real. Tara can usually just roll with this, but the big issue between them is making it difficult and she's clearly struggling. Tao and Al. Their challenge is rebuilding their friendship. Tao and Al are still dealing with the fallout of their awful date and haven't been talking. Tao is obviously desperate to reconnect, but Al is not ready. It's not until Tao gives her the apple juice, a true sign that he still cares and thinks about her, that she starts to soften. When the group secretly arranges them to visit the museum alone, they reconnect, and after a tentative chat, agree to stay just friends, no matter what the others might be thinking about it. There's also a beautiful moment between Tao and Nick. In the quiet of the hotel room, Nick checks in with Tao to see how he went with Elle. While Tao initially shuts it down, he does decide to open up about his fears of not being good enough for Elle. Nick reassures him, saying what a great friend he is, and even adds that he does like Tao. Tao is flustered with Nick's honesty and runs off to the vending machines. It's sweet, and shows just how much that friendship is starting to mean to them. Isaac and James Isaac's challenge? Figuring out what it means to actually like someone. Isaac starts by asking Charlie how he knew he liked Nick. Charlie's answer begins with relatable feelings like wanting to be around Nick all the time, which Isaac can understand. But then Charlie mentions kissing. Isaac glances at James, clearly confused and maybe even a little sad that he doesn't feel what Charlie is describing. Isaac invites James to join the group for the day and James is thrilled, pointing out how nice it is to hang out with other gay people. You can sense James putting himself out there, but Isaac is still trying to figure out what he's feeling or maybe not feeling. Imogen and Ben. Imogen's challenge is dating Ben, though they are both struggling with their egos and sense of self-worth. The more I watch this show, the more I love Imogen, and surprisingly, even understand Ben. I know, shocking, but here we are. For Imogen, she can see cracks in her relationship with Ben almost from the start of the trip, especially when she notices Ben's interest in Charlie. Ben tries to use his controlling tactics on Imogen by calling her suggestions lame, but when he pulls her close and possessively in front of Nick, she's had enough. She walks away from him and straight to Nick. Now Ben sees it as losing two people to Nick. Later, Imogen is venting to Nick and Al about Ben. Al then hits her with a truth bomb. Maybe Imogen doesn't actually like Ben at all. You can see Imogen's shock as this thought sinks in. As for Ben, He's trying to be more like Nick, which is ironic considering he considered them to be the same. He's lost control over Charlie and in turn feels like he's lost himself. In his attempt to find stability, he's clinging to Imogen and the outward projection of normal, but this backfires and he loses control of Imogen as well. Things finally come to a head at dinner. Ben tries to make nice with Charlie, but not only does Charlie reject him, Imogen snaps. She realizes she deserves better and very publicly breaks up with him. Ben, trying to save face, insults her 
but this only leaves him more isolated. He has lost all control. Afterwards, Nick and Charlie go after Imogen, who decides she doesn't want to know any details about Ben and Charlie's relationship, if they had one. Charlie is thrilled by her standing up to Ben, and so publicly, and they share a warm hug, with Imogen joking that it would be so much easier if she was into girls. It's a touching moment of friendship and understanding. Nick and Charlie Nick and Charlie's main challenge is hiding the truth. Nick struggles with coming out, and Charlie is grappling with stress and his eating habits. It's honestly amazing that they haven't been found out yet, with how loudly they talk about their relationship on and around the bus. But in all seriousness, Nick's struggles with coming out is a huge theme here, and while I'm a bit over watching his hesitation, just hold the boy's hand, Nick. It's understandable. The secrecy is putting a strain on their relationship, though. There are a couple of things in this episode that feel off to me. First, they sit apart on the bus, which seems unnecessary since people are going to know that they're friends and on the rugby team together. Second, Tao takes the second bed, keeping Nick and Charlie from sleeping together. I mean sharing a bed. This made sense in the comic, where Tao didn't know they were dating yet, but here it feels like unnecessary drama for the show. One thing that is very obvious on the trip is that Nick pays attention and is starting to notice how little Charlie is eating and how stressed he seems. He does his best to lift Charlie's spirits in playful moments like sharing ice cream, bed hugs, and neck kisses. Charlie is definitely struggling, especially with Ben's presence and renewed interest in him. I love Nick's possessiveness when Ben tries to talk to Charlie at dinner. It's also clear that Charlie is stressed about Nick's coming out. He wants so badly for them to be out together, but he's worried that Nick might get bullied. Tara tells Charlie that it took her a long time to be comfortable with her sexuality and that patience and time will help Nick feel ready to be openly himself. This advice resonates with Charlie, helping him understand Nick's perspective a bit more. This episode is packed with character growth, relationship struggles, and some beautiful moments of friendship and love. Whether it's the awkwardness of new romance, the tension of hiding the truth, or the bravery it takes to end a relationship, Heartstopper continues to capture these experiences in a way that feels just so real. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more Heartstopper content. And as always, thanks for watching and let's see what other secrets we can uncover next time on Nerdy Investigations. Charlie! You two coming up? Oh, you're being gay. Good job. Carry on.